This is a Reedy S Plus. Uh, so this was a request. Uh, looked at the motor. Uh, the end bill is actually not the easiest thing to turn smoothly, uh, but uh, I made it work. Before I do the Gauss test, uh, the can the can's pretty nice. It's it's well made. I would think uh, they have these large cutouts to expose the laminations. I'm sure that's for cooling. Uh, then again, because it is aluminum, aluminum is very good at getting rid of heat. Actually, aluminum is horrible at retaining heat. Uh, so if you heat it up, it cools down very, very fast. Unlike iron. iron. Uh, actually, that's probably why iron is better for cooking, I think. That, that's just my opinion. Well, I guess it depends on what you want to cook. Uh, Gauss, so here we go. Uh, 1511, 1535. So it's over uh, 1,500. Which, which is good. And uh, here we have the data. So on this one, I only did uh, three runs. And the reason why is because I have a four and a five. This is close enough to a five for me to stop. Uh, and this is close enough to a four. And if you look at the degree difference, it's, it's two degrees. So I'm not really going to chase something in between for one degree. Now here the average is one degree, but if you look at these, there's a two, there's a two, and there's a three difference. So you take the average, that's what it gives you. Uh, the spread here is a three, that's not bad. Uh, over here, eh, could be better. Uh, but uh, if, you're, if this is the first video that you watch with an analyzer, it's very common to see a spread of you know, three, four, uh, start worrying about it once you see things closer to a 10, I would say, then you really have to mess with the end bell, try to line it up. Uh, but uh, if I were to compare this with some of the other motors, uh, let's see. So I'm not going to compare it with uh, the V3, mainly because this one's in a uh, different class. Uh, but we'll go to probably the Hobby Wing. Uh, let's see. So 5.3, 47, 29, 51. Uh, well, here's the helix. Uh, let's see, 5.3, well, 5.1. So we're looking at 2849, 2952. That's pretty good. 2951. Actually, this 3D Plus, this is, uh, that's good. Uh, uh, let's see, what about a 4 out of 4? 2750. Do we have a 4? Don't have a 4. Uh, but it would be somewhere in between. Uh, so this is actually pretty good competition. Uh, let's look at the Hobby Wing. Hobby Wing, we have a four, uh, 2591. So I would say the 3D Plus is is in there. So this is, let's see, 2750. I think the other one was 2751. Yeah, these things are spot on. Uh, as far as KV, uh, that was at 45 degrees. Uh, let's see, Hobby Wing. 46 degrees. Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, the other one has more KV. Uh, what was I looking at? Maybe the Trinity. Nope. I think I skipped a line or something. Uh, so 2591.4. Uh, so this one definitely has more KV. Now, now really quick, uh, don't jump into any conclusions. Um, Every motor has an application, so they're all different. Now, given that this one has far more KVs, and I did measure the rotor, so the rotor is uh, just over 24 millimeters by 12.48. Uh, this is a shorter rotor. Uh, the Hobby Wing G4 has a longer rotor, and when you have a short rotor, less Gauss, which is what the Reedy S Plus, uh, you're going to end up with a revving motor. So this is a revving motor. You're going to get a lot of RPMs. You're probably going to have to gear down, which is normal, and it's good. It depends on your application. Uh, the Hobby Wing is more than likely going to be just your regular spec motor, uh, but it has more Gauss. And speaking about Gauss, just so I can back up my claims, here we go. So the Reedy S Plus... We're looking at, oh, I already mentioned this, just above 1,500. 
uh, G4, here we go. So this would be the G4. G4 is 1,700, so we're looking at 200 more Gauss. Uh, so the G4 is going to be more of your torque motor. Uh, your Reedy S Plus is going to be your rev motor. So here it's going to depend on the application. So I'd be willing to bet that uh, with the right gearing and the right ESC, this thing is probably a screamer, this uh, Reedy S Plus. Uh, and uh, here, let's see. Reedy S Plus is probably going to be be, uh, I mean, it has more kV. Let's see, no, that's a 25.5. I don't want to compare with a 25.5. Let's see if I can find something that's similar. Um, so, I'm, so the reason I, if you're seeing this, uh, this one may seem similar, but remember, uh, the Red Dog is a fixed timing motor, so I'm not comparing it to that. Uh, hmm. Oh, here we go. Uh, so this was a Trinity rotor that I tested a uh, long time ago. Uh, this is a 1550, and I put this in an X-Factor. I think I also put in a slot machine. Uh, but this was a rev motor. Now, this is a lot smaller diameter. This is 11.5, uh, but that would be an example. Or even this one here, this uh, 1717. Let's see if I can find those. I thought I had those. Uh, let's see. Trinity, somewhere in here. Oh, here we go. All right, so that's that 11.5. If we look at the 11.5, 3,127.82. So if we look at the timing, uh, the Reedy, I believe, was 46. This one's 45. Uh, they're both at about uh, just over 27. Although if we look at the amps, uh, because this rotor is so small in diameter, it revs to the moon in comparison. So that's something else you want to consider. The Reedy has a diameter of 12.48, say 12.5. This one has a diameter of 11.5. Uh, that's going to make a difference in torque. So this one's going to be a higher revving motor, even higher now. Uh, but the Reedy is going to have now more torque than this one. Uh, which one is best for you? Uh, that's a very good question. It's going to depend on your surface, uh, your application. Uh, sometimes you're just going to have to play around with them. Uh, this one did not work out for me. Uh, but it could work for somebody else. Uh, just depends. But let's see, what else can we compare it to? Uh, see, so the Reedy. Oh no, this is the stock stock rotor. Well, I guess I can show you stock rotor. So this is the X Factor uh, nine. Sorry, eleven nineteen. So this is the stock rotor, uh, twelve point five. So this is a similar diameter, but this is a longer rotor. This one's a twenty five point. I believe, in length. So here you can see a 4. We're at uh, 2449. Um, so that's going to make a difference. Oh, Surpass. Oh, I've been running this motor. I like this one. Uh, let's see. And for the price, hard to beat. Uh, 4.1 and say, call it 2500. So 1500. We're just going to round. Uh, but the gas is greater on that one. But Still, let's go ahead and look at that. So 44 degrees, and we'll go to the Reedy. And here we go. So we're looking at uh, 200 more Gauss, approximately. So that's something to consider. But again, if we go to the Gauss, uh, if I remember correctly, that one was over 1600. Uh, I should have it here somewhere. I should do alphabetical order on this thing. Here we go. Uh, so 1725. So we're looking at 200 Gauss more again. So the surpass is going to be closer to the G4, for example. The Reedy is definitely going to be a revving motor. So a little less torque, high revs. Uh, usually what some people suggest is if you are in lower traction conditions, you generally want a more of a revving motor. So less torquey. If you're in high traction conditions, you generally want a torqueier motor just to take advantage of that additional traction. Um, so it's just how you want to accelerate. Do you want it to have a high punch or a low punch so you don't lose traction? Uh, that's generally what a lot of people will suggest, but to be honest, it's, it's up to you uh, because you can always make up torque with gearing or you can make up speed with gearing. Uh, so uh, I think Probably something that would be more important would be to try to find the sweet spot for the motor. 
say the timing and amp consumption, and then find the gearing that goes along with it. And the, the reason why I'm saying this is uh, in a previous video, so when I ran my F1, that's what it was, F1, uh, I swapped out the motor. Uh, let's see, I think I was running a Helix 25.5 or, yeah, I believe that's what it was. I used to have a different motor there, but I can't remember right now. But I put a Hobbywing uh, G3R in it. And Qualifier 1 was great. And then Qualifier 2, I thought, hmm, let's bump the timing. Let's go from, let's go up to 55. So I bumped it 5. And the heat more than doubled, which is normal because heat is, uh, it's a square relationship with the amp draw. So that's the reason why. So that 5 will cause a much higher amp draw, which means a lot more heat in what would be a race. Uh, so given that, one of the things that I noticed actually looking at my times, my times were actually 0.2 slower uh, when I bumped up the timing. Now it could have just been maybe the temperature changed on the surface, I was getting less traction. That's a possibility. Uh, for me, I'm thinking it was just the thermal efficiency. Uh, the motor was so inefficient, it was just... Uh, turning so much heat, but really I, I have no idea. I would have to do some other test and figure it out. But the point is, let's just say they were exactly the same. The timing and the gearing were not matched. Um, so I think that has a little more more value. But, all right. Uh, going back to, uh, let's see, so this was Gauss. Uh, well, we can stop here at Gauss since I've already shown the KV. Oh, but here we go. Okay, we're we're back. Uh, but again, when it comes to KV, this is uh, I would I would call this a rev motor, uh, and I don't think you can go wrong with this motor or many of the other ones. It just depends on your application, or if you have a brand preference. Um, I I actually do like Reedies. Uh, I think Reedies are nice little motors. I'm not saying it's the best. Uh, I'm not saying it's the worst. It's definitely not the worst. Uh, but keep that in mind. So that being said, I. I hope this was uh, informative or at least entertaining. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.